Welcome to Simple Investing Secrets. In this video, we're going to talk about the top 10 best high dividend stocks to buy now. Before starting, like the video and subscribe to the channel for future updates. Geopolitical worries continue to pose a significant danger to the markets. The government's debt ceiling may become a point of contention. Investors are searching for high-quality dividend stocks to generate income in light of these unsettling elements, regardless of how the market performs in the near future. Despite the current economy uncertainty, the outlook for 2023 is improving for these 10 dividend stocks, all of which yield at least 3%. Stocks of companies that regularly distribute to their owners, typically in the form of cash payments, are known as dividend stocks. The finest dividend stocks can be fantastic strategies to build long-term wealth in addition to being valuable sources of income. Number 10. Grupo Aeroportuario del Pacifico Sab de CV. A Mexico airport manager with the name of Pacific Airport Group, it has concessions for two airports in Jamaica and 12 airports in Mexico. The concessions for the Mexican airports include automatic inflation adjustments and are valid through 2048. Many tourist sites like Puerto Vallarta and Cabos, as well as the sizable metropolis of Guadalajara, the industrial center of Tijuana, are among the key concessions. The corporation first noticed a spike in tourist traffic in 2021 as a result of Mexico's more lax COVID-19 travel regulations than most other nearby destinations. Analysts predict that the increase of tourism will slow down, but Pacifico is currently gaining from reshoring and the surge in manufacturing activities in Mexico. Number 9. Stanley Black & Decker Incorporated Lead manufacturer of power tools, outdoor equipment, and industrial fasteners is Stanley Black & Decker. As people restored their homes and landscaped their gardens during the pandemic, the corporation saw unheard of prosperity in 2020 and 2021. Since then, demand has plummeted dramatically. Power tools are long-lasting products, so once customers buy equipment, they use usually have it for a while. As a result, it'll take some time for Stanley Black & Decker's earnings to be back to normal. But revenues should eventually return to normal as house maintenance and repair are typically dependable categories of commodities. Prior to 2020, Stanley Black & Decker normally generated earnings per share of around $6.50. Stanley Black & Decker's shares would be worth $110.50 at a modest price earnings ratio of 17, which is significantly higher than the stock's closing price of 87.77 on February 8th. In accordance with its prior distribution, Stanley Black & Decker Incorporated announced a quarterly dividend on February 15th of 80 cents per share. Number 8. Tyson Foods Incorporated, a company that manufactures meat products, is Tyson Foods. That made 2022 challenging. In the midst of last year's inflationary commodity market conditions, the cost of proteins increased significantly. Meanwhile, Tyson was unable to completely pass through these higher prices to customers since it predominantly sells low-margin commodity meat rather than more value-added branded goods. Tyson's stock price dropped as a result of falling profit margins. These cycles in the meat industry are typical and short-lived. Tyson's profitability ought to increase as the economy grows more stable. Tyson is trading at just nine times forecast earnings despite the fact that 2023 earnings are predicted to drop significantly. Apart from the dividend, Tyson shares are quite valuable from a shared price perspective. Aaron Lash of Morningstar estimates fair value to be 106 a share compared to the stock's February 8th closing price of just $59.98. Number 7. Realty Income Corporation. Dividend investors have come to know and love Realty Income. The company cleverly branded itself as the monthly dividend company, and for more than 25 years straight, it has increased its payout each year. That not only makes the business a wise investment, but also demonstrates its stability in the occasionally unstable realm of commercial real estate. This stability results results from Realty Income's status as a triple net lease operator, which means that its customers are responsible for covering major costs like utilities. This contractual protection gives Realty Income more stability, particularly in light of the recent increase in inflation. Due to rising interest rates and 
a probable downturn in the demand for retail real estate, investors may be uneasy. Investors would give realty income the benefit of the doubt, though, considering its solid track record. Number six, Avalon Bay Communities Incorporated. Apartment buildings are the primary emphasis of Avalon Bay Communities, a REIT. The business runs more than 82,000 units and has plans to build another 5,000. High quality markets include New York, Washington, D.C., and California have received Avon Bay's attention. Despite the fact that rent costs can vary greatly from location to location, Avalon Bay's emphasis on high income regions should result in more operational consistency. When rents rose sharply in several regions in recent years, Avalon Bay's revenues soared. Despite this, investors worried about rising interest rates and a weak property market caused AVB stock to drop considerably during the previous year. These are legitimate worries, but rent costs are likely to drop significantly, especially given that demographic data continues to point to a housing scarcity in many locations across the nation. Number 5. Digital Realty Trust Incorporated Data centers and communications hardware are the main emphasis of Digital Realty Trust, a real estate investment trust, REIT, with exponentially more data that businesses need to store over time. Digital Realty has experienced phenomenal growth. As opposed to outsourcing to a third-party owner like Digital Realty, some major tech companies have built their own data centers, posing a risk to the corporation. Investors are becoming uneasy about digital realty and other data center operators as a result of it The and the rise in interest rates. But given that the stock has dropped by around a third from its record high, it is possible to argue that this is now more than priced into digital realty shares. At this pricing, the company offers a respectable yield and should see its share price rise as interest in data centers resumes. Number 4. Amgen Incorporated Amgen is a sizable biotech business with a wide range of products that have been accepted by the Food and Drug Administration. The organization has concentrated on therapies for ailments like cancer, inflammatory problems, and renal failure, among others. As some of its top products near the end of their patent protection periods, Amgen has begun to experience challenges. To combat this, the business has added new items through acquisitions. The Onyx Pharmaceuticals acquisition expanded Amgen Gen's oncology product range and the upcoming Horizon Therapeutics PLC HZNP acquisition should strengthen the company's position in immune system related medicines. Amgen stock has dropped from almost $290 in November to a closing price of $240.20 on February 8th. With the share price falling, it is now only trading at 12.3 times projected earnings while still paying out a healthy dividend. Number 3, US Bancorp Another one of the country's major banks, U.S. Bancorp, specializes in retail consumer banking. Because of this, U.S. Bancorp has historically enjoyed higher-than-average profitability measures. U.S. Bancorp, meanwhile, has underperformed during the previous 10 years. In the recent climate of zero interest rates, its banking that caters to customers did not fare as well. Yet now that interest rates are rising, U.S. Bancorp should have considerably better future prospects. Prospects. This is particularly true considering that it recently finalized the purchase of Union Bank, which it had purchased from Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group Incorporated MUFG in December. This increases the bank's presence in lucrative West Coast area. Future outperformance should be fueled by a growing branch network and increased loan margins. Number 2. Toronto Dominion Bank One of the biggest banks in Canada is Toronto Dominion Bank. It has large operations in investment and retail banking as well as a sizable U.S. franchise. Due to the low level of competition and advantageous regulatory framework in Canada... Banks there have historically outperformed banks in the majority of other wealthy nations. Despite the long-term success of the sector, Canadian banking stock declined in popularity in 2022. Fears of a housing market downturn were present at the time. Over the past 15 years, bears have been expecting a significant Canadian housing bust. They might be correct, 
one of these years, but generally speaking, investors have done well to stay the course with Canadian banks, and TD specifically gains from its extensive geographic and business line diversification. Number one, BP PLC. One of the biggest integrated energy businesses in Europe is BP. Since the early 1900s, the company has been a major player in the oil and gas sector, one of the companies that has changed its business model most quickly in recent years towards more low-carbon energy producing sources is BP. The management, meanwhile, seem to be unsure about that. According to a recent Wall Street Journal article, BP intends to reduce its spending in green energy. Investors might applaud such decisions since it will enable the corporation to give present shareholders more money back. In turn, dividend investors will benefit from this. BP just announced a 10% raise to its dividend and is currently repurchasing massive amounts of stock. Also, BP shares are of value buy because they are trading for just six times projected earnings. So, what do you think about our video? Do let us know in the comment box below. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel for future updates.